this next one is called Rhinestone Religion. This episode of 2150 begins in the middle of a geography lesson the following Tuesday. Okay, Zoomy, I want you to come up here and show me on the globe where Australia is. But teacher, you know I'm no good at that. Well, come on up here and give it a try. Zoomy didn't do his homework. You're next, Fob. Okay, Zoomy. Um, hmm. I'll give you a little hint. It's one of two continents in the Southern Hemisphere. He may as well have given him the answer. Um, hmm. Here, this is it. Zoomy. That's the North Pole. Yes, and I'm astonished. You aren't kidding me, are you? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> Zoomy, I didn't roll off the assembly line just yesterday, you know. And I know when somebody's lying to my face. You really did think the North Pole was Australia. A visitor from another galaxy would have done better than that. Get in your chair. Thanks a lot for the encouragement. It's obvious you didn't do your homework. Yeah, he was over at Lukey's house watching the time tunnel. I didn't know Lukey had a time tunnel. Television show, teacher. It's a television show. Oh, all right. And Fob, for being so little, you sure got a big mouth. If I hear one comment about firecrackers, I'm going to come over there and scan your desk. And if I find one firecracker, you're going to eat it. Oh, I don't believe it. Someone dared threaten the master of the galaxy. Get up here and, and show me Japan on this globe. Mm, Fob, you better get up there if you don't want to chew. Oh, I guess I better. <laughs> My bottom's on fire! Fob, let me make this very clear. I maintain a high standard in this classroom, and there are some things I will not tolerate. Back talk is one of them, and threats is another. If I hear another threat come from your mouth about firecrackers, to me or any of these other students, it's Amicron. <laughs> yes, sir. That's more like it. Now, would you mind showing me Japan on this globe? <laughs> right there. All right, at least you studied your lesson. Okay, get back to your seat. But I need a pillow. If you think that hurts now, just imagine a SWAT upon a SWAT. I'm out of here. Okay, get back to your seat. Okay, Frib, come on up here. But I can't, teacher, because I'm tending to my jelly-filled depth charges. Frib, why do you fling a dingy remark on my face when you know you're going to get punishment? Must be temporary insanity. <laughs> but put a cap on your mouth and the dingy remarks can't disrupt this classroom. Get up here. <laughs> Be quiet. Okay, Fred, I want you to show me the state of Oklahoma. I can't understand what you're saying. Maybe you better take that cap off your mouth. Okay, show me Oklahoma. Right there. That's the United States, but where is Oklahoma? Right there. Oh, you got it right. You must have been studying. All right. Teacher. Yes, Frib. What does John Wayne in a meteorite fragment have in common? Uh-oh, here comes the corn. Frib, I really don't need to know. Both of them were at one time shooting stars. Oh, yeah. That's a bomb of a joke. I can't all right, all right. Frib, get in your chair. Did you the smoke coming out of your ears? Again. That's because my multi-logic mega nonsensico data parallax filtration matrix circuit card was taxed to the limit. Now there's really smoke coming out of your ears. Must be his lingual circuits being taxed. Joe, get up here and show me the Philippines. Okay. Right there, teacher. I see you've been doing your homework. Well, not really. You didn't do your homework? Yeah, I did my homework, but that's not why I can find a map of the Philippines so easily. Well, explain. Well, the guy who made this tape, he got married to a beautiful young lady from the Philippines. 
And so he's very familiar with the geography of that country. Uh, Joe, are you feeling okay? What are you talking about, the guy who made this tape? This is a globe, not a tape. I'm talking about the tape we're recorded on. Brother! Yeah, I think his mind was affected when he went over to Skorzik's house with that machine going. At any rate, you did well. Get in your chair. Thank you, teacher. Yes, Kodo. Uh, teacher, uh, how is Skorzik doing? Well, the last I heard, he's doing pretty good. He's kind of come out of his shock or whatever he was in. I think he's going to be released from the hospital today. Okay. <gasps> All right, uh, Kodo, I'd like you to come up here. Teacher. No excuses. <laughs> Very well. Okay, I want you to find Botswana. <laughs> teacher. <laughs> Kodo. Take it outside now. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Manny blasted the globe into pieces. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kodo asked you to find Botswana, not simulate a Nova. I don't believe it. That sneeze blew that globe to pieces. Get in your seat. You're going to pay for a new globe. Uh, yes, sir. It's better than eating plum any day. Okay. In your geography books, I want you to do chapter 7. Read that chapter and do the questions. Oh, that's it for the day. That's your homework. See you tomorrow. Hey, a teacher. Yes, Joe. Uh, did you say the Skorzik was released to go home today? Yes, the uh, physicians there determined that uh, the trauma that he had incurred through whatever it is that happened to him had subsided and he was all right to go home. Is he okay? Well, they said he was really shaken up, more than anybody really they'd ever seen. <laughs> Teacher? Yes, Joe? Well, why'd you make that funny face at me? I didn't make a funny face at you. Joe, I have to report into the front desk. See you tomorrow. Okay. I think I'm going to check out Skorzik and see what happened to him. Uh, a little bit later, Joe arrives at Skorzik's house just in time to see Skorzik disintegrate that machinery. Skorzik? Who is it? It's me, Joe! You might as well come in. I can come in? Yes, come in. Okay. Hi, Skorzik. Skorzik, what are you doing? What? No, don't! You're destroying the machinery! Skorzik, what are you doing? I have destroyed the main coil and interface matrix. When I get done dismantling the rest of the equipment, I am going to burn all of my paperwork concerning this project. Skorzik, what happened to you? The last time I saw you before you appeared in the classroom, I was drawn through the interface. Skorzik, wh why are you destroying the equipment? I mean, it took you months, I guess, to build it and to figure out exactly the right parameters. What happened to you on the other side of, of wherever you went? Joe, please do not ask. Come on, Scorzik, you're leaving me in suspense. Joe, the English language and any other language on this planet could not possibly... You're trembling. Come, help me dismantle the rest of this junk. What are you going to do with it? Most of it is salvageable for other far more benevolent projects. So you're not going to tell me what happened, huh? Joe, if I could tell you, if there were words in our language to describe what I experienced, I would tell you. But I would be like a man trying to describe the flavor of a pizza to a creature that doesn't even eat. What? I will say this. To me, it seemed like I was where I was, perhaps for years. Years? Come on, Skorzik, you're only gone two days. Suffice it to say, Joe, I was made aware of that I would playing with fire, venturing into that which I have no business. I was shown mercy. Shown mercy? By who? Joe, you must give me time. I am still recovering from what I went through. You look pretty shaken up, Skorzik. I guess I'll catch you later. See you tomorrow in class. Very well. Uh, next day, just after the second bell was rung, 
And it's good to see, Skorzik, that you're back with us in class and seemingly in good condition. I am very glad to be back, Instructor Android. <coughs> Skorzik, what did you see in that other dimension you went into? Yeah, did you see Cylons? Or Klingons? Did you say hi to Luke Skywalker for me? You guys knock it off. This isn't funny. I don't want you pestering him about his experience. Sorry, teacher. Don't tell me, tell him. Okay. As you have noticed, we got a new globe. Courtesy of Kodo. I didn't know globes were so expensive. Teacher, I think Kodo did try to tell you that he was going to sneeze, but you kind of ignored him. Kodo knows very well that he has my permission to run for the door without my prior approval if he knows he's going to sneeze. So he has no excuse. It was cold outside. Like I said, no excuse. It probably would have done him some good to sneeze outside of the door. It probably would have cleaned the snow off the walkway. Be quiet. This is the first time I've seen snow fall here in the desert valleys. Well, it's all in keeping with our strange changing weather patterns. <laughs> Just like the Chunker's bicycle being disintegrated. Okay, as you know, today we are beginning our study on the country of the Philippines. How many of you read the uh, assigned chapter for homework last night? Lukey, I give up on you. I don't even want to ask you why you didn't do your homework, because I know the answer I get would involve a one-eyed monster. No, what I watched last night crawl across the floor and ate iron. Lukey's talking about the television set or video. <gasps> oh, oh. Lukey, you deserve a perpetual punch-up, Ray. I'm seriously considering expelling you from this school. Your last grade report was almost straight D's and F's. And it's been that way for the last year. <gasps> Expelling me? I don't know what else to do with you. You're making no progress despite repeated warnings. Never have I had a student that I had to make eat a videotape. All right, that's enough. Let's move on. Yes, Joe? Teacher, this textbook I was reading, the chapter about the Philippines, where it talks about the dominant religion, it says the country's 93% Christian. Joe, do you find a problem with that? I think you'd rejoice over it. Uh, teacher, I've been there. And it's not Christian, it's Catholic. Uh, big deal, what's the difference? I thought they were the same. Roman Catholicism is not Christian. Uh-oh, here we go with another religious discussion. Be quiet, Fob. Joe, in what point are Roman Catholics not Christian? For one thing, the clergy does not encourage the common people to read the Word of God, the Bible. They have this attitude that only the uppity-ups in the church know how to read and properly interpret the Bible, and that the common people are just supposed to sit there like good little toy soldiers, believe everything that they're told, not to question anything. But if you look in the Bible, it says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, handling rightly the Word of Truth. Uh, Joe, I'm a Catholic. What about purgatory? Purgatory is not found in the Word of God. You can search that Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find purgatory mentioned. There is no such thing. At death, you either gravitate to hell or you ascend to heaven. It's one of the two. And also, from one end of the Bible to the other, the Lord makes it clear that man is not to bow down to the works of his own hands, whether it's an image of Mary or the God of success or any other thing you'd put before the Lord. And in other so-called less civilized countries than this one, where the Catholic Church has dominance, those who will not belong to that church are persecuted, harassed, and discriminated against. Any of you in this classroom have doubts about that, read the Fox's Book of Martyrs. In times past, people were killed, sometimes in the most hideous ways imaginable, for not being a part of that religious machine. Uh, Joe? I know of a couple brothers in the Lord who are Catholic. They go to St. Joseph's down there on Pine Street. I know they're born again. My spirit bears witness. Well, they are saved. Not too long ago, I had a talk with one of them. Freddy, you know him? Yeah. He told me the spirit of God was dealing with him, that he was seriously considering leaving that church and finding a fellowship where the word of God is preached. He was practically starved to death for the Word of God. He was kind of being harassed because he refused to pray to Mary. Uh, what's wrong with praying to Mary? Isn't uh, she the go-between between, between uh, us and Jesus? Show it to me from the Bible. That's all I ask. 
In the Gospels, Mary herself said that she rejoiced in God her Savior. If she was without sin, then she wouldn't have said that. And after Jesus was born, she was no longer a virgin because she had other children by Joseph. People made her into a goddess. She's probably up there in heaven now weeping in anguish because of what people are doing. No one in the universe is to receive worship or adoration but Jesus Christ. The bottom line is if you can't prove it from the Bible, then you can't believe it. Ah, come on, Joe. The Catholic Church has been around for hundreds of years. It can't be all wrong. It stood the test of time. Age doesn't prove anything. Sin's been around as long as man. Does that make it good? Lying and cheating and homosexuality and all those other sins have been around as long as man's been here. They've stood the test of time. That doesn't make them right in the sight of God. Joe, are you telling me that most of the people in the Philippines are off in left field? Teacher, anybody without the Lord Jesus Christ is in trouble. It's not just the Catholics. Anybody who trusts in anything other than the blood of Jesus Christ and the grace of God to save him is in trouble. Anybody trying to work their way to heaven or believing in things not written in this word to save them are in some real trouble. The good news is that there's a way out. I mean, the bottom line is bowing down to statues is idolatry. It's sin. If you've bowed down to a, a statue of Mary, no matter what the rationalization you may have come up with, that it's only a representation or whatever, you have sinned. God's word says not to do it. But if you turn away from that mess and repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and are born again, you'll be forgiven and given a new nature that desires to pray and to read the word for yourself and not let somebody else interpret it for you. God is a personal God. He's not a God of the masses. Uh, Joe, what does the Bible say about uh, paying uh, people to pray somebody's soul out of purgatory? If money or, or prayers could get a person's soul out of hell, then Jesus shed his precious blood needlessly. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ would not have gone to that extreme, extreme effort if some other way would have worked. And it's laughable and the height of blasphemy to even suggest that money could in any way release somebody's soul from uh, purgatory or hell or anything like that. That's a slap in God's face. Uh, so what you're saying is, Joe, that only the Bible, huh? Luke, you know that's what I'm saying. Uh, Joe, what about the Christians that are in the Catholic Church? You know, if they decide to stay in the thing, that's between them and God. I have heard reports of certain small churches where the Holy Spirit is broken out and is moving, but also in those same churches, what happens is they abandon the idolatrous practices dictated by Rome and all the false beliefs and superstitions and the rest of it. You can't serve the Lord Jesus Christ and at the same time bow down to a statue of Mary and pray to it, or to her, or do all the rest of that stuff. That's contrary to the word of God. But the good thing is, teacher, what that encyclopedia or textbook doesn't say is that there's been a real revival in that country. Many are being born again. Not too long ago, though, in response to that, I heard that the cardinal of that country tried to ban the Bibles from the common people. Well, somehow it was overturned. Well, wish to be a revival in this country, you and me both. Well, it is getting late, and we do need to continue on with a lesson about the Philippines. Okay, how many of you, from what you read last night, can tell me a little something about that country? Yes, Fob. They make some dandy firecrackers, especially around New Year's. You and your firecrackers. Can't you think about anything else? I didn't read anything about that in the text. Yeah, come to think of it, there isn't anything about that in the text. How do you know about that, Fob? I subscribe to a fireworks magazine. It tells me all about all the different kind of fireworks around the world and in different varieties and everything. All right, all right. Does anybody else have anything to contribute? A throne. What was that, Skorzik? I saw an immense throne. Skorzik, speak up. I can't hear you. Oh, Instructor Android? Never mind. Some things are coming back to me that I remember. Well, okay. I'm going to give a quiz on what you read in your reading assignment last. Might as well add diddly on the country of the Philippines. Uh, what was that, teacher? That last sentence didn't quite make sense, huh? I thought I made it clear enough. After lunch, I'm going to live out a guest on the country of the ball-peen hammering, so prepare. What? Instructor Randra, that makes little sense, but uh, when shall we prepare for the test? What test? Well, what do you mean, what test? The test on the Philippines that you were talking about. We're not going to have a test. We're all going to eat plob cylinders. 
Isn't that wonderful? And Joe, you get to be the conductor. Conductor? Plopsal? Uh, teacher, what are you talking about? Be quiet, I gotta sharpen my pencil. Sharpen it. Huh, <laughs> didn't work very good. <laughs> Instructor Android, why are you blasting the end of that pencil? Because a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Don't you know any better? You should know you've already hopped through the looking glass once, Skorzik. What is wrong with a teacher? I don't need a shrink, Joe. I already have visions of bulletin boards dancing in my head. And I've already seen a shot from a twenty-two pistol into a two-by-four. Uh-oh, that sounds like the remnants of one of Fred's corny jokes. It's messing with his CPU. And C3PO to you too, Joe. Look at this, I got a cup of quicksand. If I drink it, maybe I can do the five mile a minute. I do believe the irrationality of Fribs goofy remarks and corny jokes have taken their toll upon the teacher's logic and processing unit. Yeah, the smoke coming out of his ears again. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like you're in trouble, Frib. I suggest that none of you speak anything lest you provoke the teacher into possibly harmful action. Hehe, <laughs> it's too late, Skorzik. <laughs> I must say, this is a m m m m m most unusual s s s sensation. Uh... Yeah, how come you did that to Skorzik? Be quiet, I'm trying to earn my marksmanship medal. Oh, brother, the teacher's gone nuts again. Yeah, no, I don't know what's gonna happen. I can tell you what's gonna happen. We're all gonna go on a journey to the far side of the galaxy in a pencil. Okay. Hey, what's that? Somebody's coming in on the transport beam. Look, it's Theodore Lymphnode. All right. Well, there's the instructor. I'm... You are an intruder to my classroom. Ah! That one missed. Ah! <laughs> that stray bolt hit Frib. Ah, here we go. Uh-oh. I was able to get to a shutoff switch. What happened? I think Fred's goofy remarks and corny jokes took their toll on the teacher. Yeah. Anytime that Fred would tell him one of those jokes, smoke would come out of his ears. Out of Fred's ears? No, out of the teacher's. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to bring the defective instructor android back to the front office for repair. Fred, you're coming with me. Oh, no! I want the rest of you to do whatever assignment the teacher gave you before he conked. Not as if the assignment made any sense. Come with me, Frib. No, oh, no! The rest of you get to work! That's it for this episode.